My name is Steve Barton. I work with DreadCentral.com, and I also do Brainwaves Horror and Paranormal Talk Radio. You can check it out on iTunes, because I'm cute and entertaining. And uh, it's my honor to be here again for Sci-Fi Z Nation panel. So without further ado, how about we bring out the cats who are here to see you, right? Doc, Mr. Roger, excuse me, Russell Hodgkinson. <laughs> Who's a Murphy fan? <laughs> no, really? You're right. Mr. Keith Allen. exclusive clip from the next season. Yeah. Can we do that? Can we get the lights, please? Enjoy your relationship with Mario Van Peebles in, in the show. Could we? Can, can, you, can, can you divulge some stuff? Um, okay. <laughs> uh, no, he was fantastic. Oh my god. What, like, what a great energy of testosterone that was. Oh my god, he was beautiful to look at and he's Excellent, excellent actor, um, as well as a director, but actor is, he was delicious to work with, um, um, and I mean that. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, um, I don't know what you want to know, but <laughs> we kept our clothes on, what? <laughs> Did you really, though? I, I, I had to. <laughs> hey, Kalita, I have a question. Oh, okay. this is a practical question. I'm new to piking zombies with knives. I've only done it twice. Okay. Um, I'm curious, uh, was that, is that a, is it a CGI blade that he just used? Was the blade CGI? Because I've, I've been doing both. And what works both? best? Well, because it, it was Mario, he used a real blade. Was it, was it a real blade? I mean, like, it was a real blade. <laughs> was it a real blade? No, <laughs> it was a real blade. I'm trying to become a better zombie killer. Can you help me? I'm just asking, is it Carl? <laughs> well, you know what? Um, I, I punk out a lot, so mine is fake. Yeah. A lot. Because I don't want to hurt nobody. Okay, you're going right at their head, that's what I'm asking. You like, said what? You're going right at the back of their head with it. So that's why I usually just do a handle. Yeah. If I'm well, doing that from behind. A hill. A hill yeah. is what is um, what we use in order to not hurt the person because I believe it sometimes. Because you do it now. Yeah. I believe it, so I might really go through their head. <laughs> so um, we use a... a just a handle sometimes, and um, the wonderful trick of editing. They put the blade in, and they bring the whole little shush, that little thing, and um, it just works out beautifully. So, Thank you. Uh, next time you need some help, I'll call Mario and speed dial for you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so, so, DJ, a little bit of a change of pace for you in the next season. You're actually joining the group. Yeah, I, uh, I've left the North Pole. Part of my uh, deal this year, coming back to the show, was like, get me out of the damn North Pole. I'm with the guys. It's so great to be on a show 
Uh, well, one of the things that draws you to TV is that you want to feel like you're in a family, right? Like, it's, it's a, unlike a movie, it's open-ended, it can go on forever and ever, or for a very long time. And so you, I was really missing that sense of, that I was on a show, the sense of camaraderie. It's really been great to work with the cast. Although, uh, I do kind of miss being shooting by myself, because shooting the show is hard, and I would shoot 30 pages in a day by myself. And, <laughs> Oh, yeah, brother. No, but it's been, it's been great because most of your scenes have been with me, so it's been fantastic. It's been amazing. <laughs> it's been great. She's the best. We got some cute shit happening. You just can't, you, she won't answer a question, but she's great. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, it depends on how much Mario Van Peebles is involved in exactly. the Exactly. <laughs> so I want to talk to Colonel Schaefer because you got some different things going on this year. You got a, a new breed, uh, dare I say, the new, the new breed of zombie, yes. Uh, the Black Rain caused a side effect and gave all of the zombies a level of consciousness. And so this season we have talkers, uh, talking zombies, who are problematic for our characters. And zombies can think and plan and uh, cause various trouble, um, unlike they have in previous seasons. So yeah, this is going to be uh, um, a very different season, I think. So, technically speaking, though, wouldn't Murphy be considered the first talker? Uh, he could be, yeah. He's a little different breed, because he's got a, he's sort of such a uh, hobo stew of uh, <laughs> chemicals and bites and... Hey, he's a big talker. And, With a splash of love. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, every, every zombie's a little bit different this season. And speaking of different, before I forget, I want to make sure everybody stays after the panel because uh, we've got a little surprise for you guys. Some, some news that you're going to want to stick around for. But before we get to that, let's is it Mario Van Peebles? It, it's, I know, is it? Wait a minute. I would have worn a different dress, right? what? What kind of blade was it, Felina? Huh? What kind of blade was it? A big blade. <laughs> wow. Wow. So, Anastasia. You're back, and, and you're, you're rejoining the group. And we're so happy for that. Big reveal. And but you, you know a little few things about the talkers. Now, why don't you tell about what you're doing in the next season? Uh, I do. I do know some things about the talkers. Um, I well, what can I share? What can I say? Say it all. Tell everything. <laughs> Give it all. Carl does not care about any kind of spoiler. <laughs> Well, uh, assuming you guys know what uh, what happens to Lucy, uh, Addie finds herself alone in the world and looking for a mission and uh, has a soft spot for these talkers, you know, people, zombie type things. Just, you know, real emotional as she usually is. And uh, yeah, so she starts kind of like helping them out. See, that's cool. So another, you're like an underground railroad. Yeah, so. kind of like that. That's pretty neat. Now, this season, everybody's on their way to New America, correct? And uh, Russell, y y you have you have some teachings. You have Doc's Stone teachings to uh, bestow upon people. Yeah, I so why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, if y'all, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, drunken history. You may know what that is. This year we have uh, Doc Stone history, and so uh, yeah, I have a little mission. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Uh, where who knew Doc was a kind of a history buff, and so that's uh, a new angle for Doc. And yeah, he talks all about it and uh, goes into his imagination. And uh, we have some crazy characters portraying some uh, some of our founding fathers, which is really fun. It's gonna be a great episode. We're shooting it right now, so it's really fun. I still have like blood in my fingernails. I couldn't get it all out. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the only one that wishes we had Doc Stone history taught in school? Woo! <laughs> like Mr. Rogers? Yeah, I, I totally would have went. <laughs> now, Lydia, you're joining one hell of a tight-knit group of people here. Yes. And you also know a little bit about the talkers. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your character, Pandora? Uh, well, Pandora, she, she already is a resident of New America, and, um, I don't think we've quite determined yet whether or not she's good or bad. Well, based on that dress you wear in that one episode, <laughs> I think you bad, girl. <laughs> she wears a latex dress. I know, it's, it's a little embarrassing because I smell like a giant condom, so I feel bad for everyone because I'm in head-to-toe latex and lube. But it's like 100 degrees outside. And she don't look like no condom, though. <laughs> 
She's mysterious. Yeah, Doc sees her from afar. He doesn't know what to make of it. She's hot. She's hot. And mysterious. She's weird looking. I'm, yeah, I just saw what I looked like for the first time because I don't really see myself outside the hair and makeup chair. I look really creepy. She's <laughs> eating. I'm watching her eat with that mask on. It's like basically yeah. watching an autopsy. It's not pretty. So yeah, I, I am. I am a sort of human zombie hybrid. So I am this new breed of talker, and we're not really sure what side Pandora falls on. Well, I'm sure we'll all be watching to find out. Now, Murphy or Keith or Murphy, whichever you prefer, um, you have some new dates in the new season. Yeah, you know, Murphy, the opportunist that he is, you know, he's always figuring out, how do I work this apocalypse angle thing, you know? So actually, uh, Murphy kind of goes off and uh, his, his blends have, have been uh, creating basically the new Las Vegas of the apocalypse, which is called Limbo. And Murphy's basically the Hugh Hefner of the uh, of Limbo, and so uh, we just saw this episode a couple weeks ago, I guess. Oh my God, we had so much fun because uh, it's sort of like every crazy thing you would bet on, you know, if it was legal. Like uh, what were some of the games we had? Uh, punch a lawyer. Um, what punch a lawyer? Who's a puker? <laughs> um, oh yeah, whack a zombie, which was like a sort of whack a mole thing. Um, zombie roulette, where they actually like hit the zombie's head and his eyeball pops out and goes around the roulette wheel. You know? <laughs> so it's like this crazy fun apocalypse town. Oh my god, it's so much fun. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm like rocking the uh, rocking the apocalypse in, in Las Vegas. It's only style, like there's another fashion. Oh plate my god. In her life. I mean, yeah. They, I think, hold on, I gotta show you these shoes. These are Murphy's shoes. I stole them for the Comic Con. Stompers. I mean, they're covered in spikes and stuff. They're fantastic. It's just amazing. Now, five seasons, man. You guys, you guys are really showing some longevity. And Woo! I can honestly say the yeah. fan base just seems to be growing. Yeah. 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 I swear, I thought you were really showing your age. Ooh. Well, no, I, 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 that's why I keep turning this way every time I look at you. So, David. You've been a big part of bringing this to everybody. And uh, why don't you talk a little bit about what you've got going on and uh, Z Nation and five seasons of it, man. You know, it's, uh, it's pretty incredible. We, when we first uh, started, we had uh, the Bible that was uh, written by uh, Carl and, and, and Craig, the other showrunner, and uh, uh, it was a five season kind of uh, show. And we were like, five seasons? We're gonna do five seasons? Um, and then we got to five seasons, it's like, well, we're gonna do five more, right? Um, so it's uh, it's been a great journey. We have another franchise, uh, you know, also kind of in that same weird space of Sharknado, and uh, which uh, we also produce. Uh, uh, Sharknado fans. Well, did you bring a little present for everybody? Yeah, we brought the clip that we're doing tomorrow for the panel. But do you want to see it tonight? tonight? What do you guys yeah. think? Would you mind a little Sharknado segue? Okay, we, we have a two-minute maybe uh, teaser for Sharknado. Do you want to play? We, let's, let's play that. Do that. This is tomorrow's exclusive. So it's a tornado made out of sharks. Okay. Okay. So David, I know I heard people keep talking about how we should do a musical episode, but I think instead of that, we should have like a Sharknado crossover. Well, there kind of wasn't season three. Oh. Episode. Five. We had uh, a tornado. The zombie nato. Oh yeah, that's and right. We could have a zombie nato. But we should get sharks in a tornado. We'll do that. If there's a season six. Mm -hmm. So right now, speaking of doing things for the fans, you guys want to talk to the casting crew? Yeah. If so, I want you to line up by the mics. They're on the sides. Uh, one of these kind people, will I can't really see it from up here, but they will, they will definitely get you uh, talking to these fine folks. So we'll get back to that in just a few minutes. But continuing with David for a minute. Yes. Because we just love you. Don't we love David? Yeah. yeah. He's the eye candy on the stage, man. Right? You better say something. <laughs> 
Now, I hear that, well, since we kind of spoiled the Sharnado thing, maybe we have something else that's actually Z Nation related. You guys want a little more? Yeah! yeah. I do! I see. I see. No. I'm not going to want to spoil it. We'll, do, we'll hold off to the end. Or what? Or, or Carl. Oh, come on. I want to see. Yeah, it. we haven't seen anything. <laughs> We're just seeing it for the first time ourselves. So. See, I'm just instigating because I want to see the other stuff, stuff too. If you stick around, Carl will have a chance. Oh, they have another Carl, what do you think? Can we show? The, the premiere of the season five Z Nation trailer? Yes! Do it for the vine. Yes! Come on, do it for the vine. Yeah! 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 Kalina, what color am I this year? Well... Come on, you got a few of them. Flaming Hot Cheeto. She calls me Flaming Hot Cheeto. <laughs> Boston Bay <Baked> Bay. <laughs> Cherry Chink. You know, I, I love it. I love, I love that, uh, you know, the uh, being a different color. I think it really makes... You need a monster. I mean, Mar Murphy's a monster at heart, and, and it really makes him stand out. But it's hard to hide in plain sight when you're bright ass red, so... Uh, <laughs> I love it. He, well, he's got to own it. And I must say, I know. must say though, you, you're kind of sexier in this whole little ring. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah. It's a little yeah. something, something. I don't know. We're family, but kind of sexy. So, Carl, there, there's a lot going on in season five. I mean, everyone's getting to, they're about to form a new country in New America. Everyone's on their way there, and it's kind of like almost being around in 1776 in a lot of ways, and there's a lot of political allegories you got going on in this season that kind of mirror what's going on in the world today. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Well, I, I mean, I think the zombie apocalypse has always been a stand-in for what we all sort of feel is the, what's the worst that could happen. Um, and in this season, our characters finally make it to America, which is a bunch of colonies that are trying to come together and form a new country. Um, and they meet, our characters meet up with this new character, George, who's kind of like the George Washington, uh, played by Katie O'Brien of the Apocalypse. Um, and there's a, uh, a huge incident that happens in uh, one of the opening episodes that blows the whole country apart, and then our characters have to sort of save this new nation, killing one zombie at a time. And the big, uh, um, sort of conflict this season is whether the talkers are going to be citizens in this new country or not. Um, and whether the talkers will side with the humans or side with the zombies going forward. And that's kind of the big dilemma of the season from which everything flows. That's pretty cool. I mean, it, it, the one thing I always loved about the, zo the zombie subgenre is it always is kind of socially conscious, you know? I mean, from George Romero yeah, right to, back to the roots of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's very cool. And before we get to the crowd, because man, you guys are lining up. I can see Love that. It. So it. before we get to the crowd, I, I just want to go right down the line. We'll start with Kalita. What has been your favorite part about this whole experience for you, and, and the arc of your character? Because your character has had a pretty serious arc, man. Yes, um, I think. Getting the job. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Um, and, and, and it's been a fantastic ride because I've been able to play in the world of this woman who is, she like surpasses whatever I could hope to do in the apocalypse because I would never freaking be in the apocalypse. No. <laughs> but um, I'm sorry, was that my boyfriend? <laughs> but um, um, I would have to say, getting the job and getting the opportunity to work in this genre because I wasn't really familiar with the genre. And um, the respect that I have for it now and just the, the loyalty that these fans have for this genre is fantastic. David? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, after five years, we're just, what's great is that we're just family. I mean, it's just, uh, we can count on one, one another. It's uh, the difference between going to set uh, on the first day to just visiting the set uh, a few weeks ago. I was telling the producers uh, on the ground, like, this is a well-oiled machine. It's, it's, it's so 
professionally done and produced, but it's, uh, I, I love what comes out of Carl, the, uh, the creativity of uh, the different zo uh, zombies that we go through, and despite, you know, kind of the feel of what uh, season five is, there are still cheese wheels. I mean, it's still a fun <laughs> show, and there's some heavy things going on. Uh, but this cast and this crew is just uh, five seasons of this. I, I, I swear, I know sci fi season too. I want five more seasons of this. Come on. Thanks, Dan. Well, I think for me, it's just seeing how much the, the, the characters and the actors themselves have changed over the course of the season. I think most TV shows, the rule of thumb is you kind of, Archie Bunker was the same at the end of the series as he was at the beginning. Um, you know, Walking Dead, all the characters are basically the same as they have worked. Our characters, you go back and look at first, the first season, it's a, they've totally changed in the way that I think five years of apocalypse would totally change you. And that's been the fun part, is just sort of responding to who they are, finding out who they are, and throwing the characters into that, you know. Uh, um, uh, particularly with, like, Kalita wasn't, a set, wasn't the lead of the show in the beginning, but it was in working with her and seeing how the characters went, she just naturally became, grew into the lead of the show. Um, and that's sort of been a really, um, since then, it's just become kind of who they are um, at, at their core, and seeing that play out in these characters is what's been fun. Awesome. Anastasia. Um, I, you know, I think for me, definitely getting to be a part of something that's um, bigger than, than me, um, not only within like the cast and the crew, but also going to the cons and meeting people, what we've kind of discovered is that Z Nation is a family show. Um, that, like, people are like, yeah, watch it with my grandma. <laughs> like, that's amazing. Um, and I think that's really, really important that, you know, our cheese wheel and our like, you know, fun, silly world is something that kind of has people come together for 44 minutes or whatever it is. Um, and then, yeah, getting to play team with these guys, getting to be a badass, strong woman in the genre is also really cool. Yeah. So that's kind of hot, though, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Because, yeah, so you hang out with these guys. And your great sister in your pocket was just great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Keith, it, it's it's the shoes, right? <laughs> it's all He's in the book fashions, let's be honest. Uh, no, you know, for me, it's really is, and I, I really didn't expect this, but getting to really connect with the fans on a one-on-one -on -one basis, especially when we do conventions like this, and really hear personal stories about how our little zombie show affects people's lives in such a positive way. I, I really had no expectation of that. Uh, you know, people will tell me, like, yeah, we, we have family night and watch Z Nation, or... One woman just sent me a, a video of her, her kid who's got a, a really bad ADD, and this is, he, Z Nation is the only thing he will sit still for, and, uh, and how he's drawn to my character, and to know that, you know, what I'm doing in this small way is affecting someone's life in a much bigger way than I could have ever expected, it's, it's really touching and, and satisfying as an actor. It's Keith's shoes, right? <laughs> uh, wow, for me, um, having a job is really cool. <laughs> Love that part. Um, but also, the, the really unique thing about television is, uh, unlike theater and unlike film, you really get to help develop a character over a long period of time. Like Carl was saying, um, all of us weren't the characters initially. We've kind of developed them over time. And uh, so much of our own personalities kind of come through, and our writers and Producers and directors are uh, really nurture that, and they they, they want to see the best of you, you know. But um, other than that, it's the, the connection that we have with our fans all over the, the world. Really, it's amazing that we have fans just from everywhere: Venezuela, and Brazil, Egypt, and you know, it's really astounding. And uh, just, I feel really grateful to be part of it. I'm really grateful that you guys came out and uh, supported us today. Thank you. Honestly, before I had the opportunity to join the cast and be a part of the show working with all of these incredibly talented actors, I was just like every single one of you out there in this room where I was a fan of the show. So for me, this opportunity and being a part of this family and the Z Nation, I mean, it really is a dream come true, so I love it. Um, although, you know, Pandora is a little bit of a 
bitch. She's mysterious. <laughs> hot in it. Dress. Sarah is not exactly like me, but I do, I do love playing her, and she's, you know, if you saw her in the video, she don't look like me. And I'm, you know, I think the biggest challenge is I'm stumbling through the apocalypse in eight and a half inch platform stilettos, and they've made me blind in one eye in that mask, so I have no depth perception. But you hat in that dress. <laughs> single hot sweaty dirty moment with this incredible cast and everybody it really is a dream come true I love you guys but you hot in that dress we <laughs> are so lucky to have you you can not complain it's amazing like you are I know you have to be uncomfortable the whole time, like it's all day fun. and so you're fun. great and it, I, I sent you I sent Lydia a text a few weeks ago uh, telling her that seeing her reminded me of when I first started acting and it made me like, after a while, it becomes a job. It does. There, there are days that it, it's, it's hard. There are days that you're just trying to get through like any other job. And you, you don't always revel in the magic of what you're doing. And working with her, it's been sort of like a, oh, right, that's what it is. It's that. And it's, that, it's, that's been a really cool thing, so thank you for that. I know, it's been so much fun. I mean, Carl, I honestly, I cannot thank you enough for this opportunity, because I, I fucking love the show. I love Pandora, <laughs> and I love all you guys. This is amazing. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> Just to show you how the process works, Lydia came in and read for something else that she didn't get. Yeah, I read for like a much for another role. Old man. But then we went, yeah, but we want to use her somewhere. Let's write something specifically for her. And that's, you know, we created the character to use her. So, um, it, it worked out great. Something tells me she's going to end up being a real fan favorite. And she, <laughs> <in that> <laughs> she is a lot of fun to play. It's really hard to get in and out of that costume, but she is so much fun. I love lurking around, you know, having my little moments with all the other actors. And I, I mean, I like I said, I didn't realize just how creepy I looked until I saw the clips and stuff. <laughs> I mean, I'm half blind. I got the silver hair, and I mean, it's awesome, and I love it. But I mean, I just I love working with you guys. It's really great. DJ, your favorite part about being a part of this experience? You know what's great about being on this show is because we're in the, the apocalypse, you're forced to do what you have to do to survive, and that gives me an opportunity. Like, an actor my size doesn't get to do physical stuff very often. <laughs> and so, uh, Citizen Z's become, uh, he can kick ass, and I'm, I'm stoked to be able to do that. And it's real because you have to do it. Uh, these people obviously have a lot of skills, otherwise they would be dead. So, um, it's fun to play a badass. I, I really enjoy that. And also, t Taco Day is my favorite day. <laughs> Let's go to the crowd. Lydia, I love you, first of all. Love you so much. Love you, love you, love you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I follow you on Instagram, and I... First of all, I think we have a lot in common from our love of Disney. Yes, I do love Disney. <laughs> Disney Haunted Mansion. <laughs> um, I would love to take a picture uh, on the Haunted Mansion <coughs> floor where you're like laying in the middle of it. Oh, like, yes. I, yes, so that's one of my dreams. Anyway, um, so I know you're a huge fan already of horror and gore and all of that, so it almost seems like you didn't really need to like prepare for this, <laughs> but did you, or what did you do if you did? I, I did, you know, I, I'm definitely an avid horror fanatic, anyone who knows anything about me knows that I'm obsessed with horror, and I'm pretty sure my prop collection might rival Guillermo del Toro's, I'm just <laughs> obsessed with all of it. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I have done a little bit of training, something that's going to get introduced a little later in the season, coming up in my next episode, I'm about to go back up and film. I get to play with some really fun swords and knives, so I've been doing a bit of fight training, um, so yeah, I'll get to start experimenting in that department with my character. It might be tricky, I'm a little scared with who I might fight with because I have no depth perception, but it's going to be fun, I'm really excited. And she gonna be at that dress. <laughs> Next question. Hi, um, I have a message from a former cast member, actually, huh? on Twitter, um, which follows up into my question. I am a massive Tom Everett Scott fan, and I have been since that thing you do. <laughs> I love him. He's a great guy. <laughs> and I have to ask why you had to join the number of casts that have murdered him throughout his career. <laughs> um, but he tweeted, 
tell them I miss them and I wish I was still whacking Z's with them. Yeah. Oh, is the best. I love it. Why'd we have to kill him? He yeah, costs too much. We couldn't afford it. Yeah. Yeah. We can't afford that. Is that, is that the reason why we killed him? It's a big show, yeah. Really? yeah. This show sucks. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> but he's expensive. Uh, he's a man too, you know? He didn't look hot in that dress. <laughs> <laughs> but we do miss him. He was great, great fun to play. He was awesome. Sure. We love you, Tom! Next question. Hang up, Tom. Uh, hey guys, um, first off, I just want to say um, I'm a huge fan of the show. I've been with you guys since day one. Thanks. Um, watching those commercials in the summer of 2014 with, with DJ, you know, uh, talking about killing Z's and whatnot. Uh, awesome, brother. For, 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 for the time and place I was in in my life, it just it has just provided such a great outlet for me. Um, and I just want to thank you guys. I wish I could go through and end it. Oh, on. dude, come here. I want to hug you. <laughs> <laughs> Just look for him in the foyer after this is all over. He'll be hugging more people, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> so much really exciting. So, what was your question? Uh, now that you've got, or did you get your fill now that you've been hugged? No, 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 no. Uh, so my question is, uh, a lot of old storylines are still left open. Uh, in particularly, in particular, the one about the man. Uh, I thought he provided just a weird organizational element you know, with what's behind going on in the apocalypse. So for me, that's the one that I'm most interested in. But there's others uh, that I probably can't think of off the top of my head. Are, of course, so you were just hugged by DJ Cole. <laughs> are, are, are we going to see any of those storylines, you know, wrapped up? And in particular, are we going to see the man come back? Yeah. Season six. I <laughs> uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, story characters that are left open and things like that, in part because we meet him and we love him. We have Emilio Rivera, another great character. Uh, and and we didn't kill him off, we left him, you know, with like weird eyes and run him off into the apocalypse so we could bring him back someday. So it's, it's all up in the air and it's just um, where we want to go that season and how the story tells itself and you know, we kind of play with the way the apocalypse would really be chaotic and people would come and go and disappear and you not know what happened to them. And that's just kind of part of the show psychologically that we're, um, it's sort of intentional that things come and go and you don't know exactly what's going to happen in the long run. But you also keep hinting at like a, a sort of overlord big brother, like with Zona and things like that. Right. Someone, uh, someone's pulling puppet strings around there, which we still aren't really clear yeah, there's about. There's more elements of that this season than we see mm -hmm. when Zona comes back and rears its ugly head in a way. And, um, but yeah, we all love the, the man and Tom Everett Scott and many of the characters and some of them go away and, and come back like uh, Abby did this season. So. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, there's still that busload of crazy people out there. <laughs> they didn't cost a lot. They were, <laughs> uh, they were great. I love those. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. I think they know what Chris is From the Insane Asylum. There you go, the Insane Asylum. Yes, sir. Hi. Hi. Oh, my name's Sarah. And oh, Sarah. Hey, Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> I actually, I kind of feel like I'm following you around cons. I saw some of you at Walker Stalker not too long ago. Yes. Oh, hey! <laughs> well, I'm looking here, but she's over there. Hi. Because <laughs> there's monitors right Sorry. <laughs> and my question this time around, um, in Zombieland it was the Twinkie, so for each of you, what would be the ideal thing to find in the middle of the apocalypse? Um, an edible? Yeah. Eating wise. <laughs> Anything. Just Anything. Well, I know what Kalina and I were trying to find. Uh, 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 what would that be? Wait, wait, what? 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 I think I got a couple things. What? <laughs> that part? I think a hot shower. Wait, what? what? A hot shower? Yeah. Oh, a hot shower. Absolutely. Cheeseburger? Um, oh, God. Here's the thing. This hair the other day. We probably, our characters probably stink. Yeah. Like, there's no deodorant. Yeah. You know the other is. There's no, 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 no
probably smell like the 1700s. Yeah. <laughs> and right now the dude DJ hugged is like, oh, thank God. <laughs> I would say champagne. I would say um, Morton's Restaurant. <laughs> I would say um, an airplane up out of the apocalypse. <laughs> Fingernail polish. <laughs> In and out burger. Yeah. I was just gonna say that. A good old 7 Eleven. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, what do I want to find? Um, next week's script. Yeah, that <laughs> He's a busy man. And Lydia in that hot ass dress. <laughs> You realize, TJ, now you have to go to every single person I know. Yeah. I'm bringing it up for everybody. <laughs> he got My up. question is for Kita. Um, as we found out this season, you your character is a huge juggalo, apparently. Who? Uh, juggalo. Uh, and St. Fry Posse. Wait, uh, what, uh, what, what's your question? <laughs> Your Insane Clown Posse episode. Yes. Yes. I was wondering if there's anything you, if I was to spit out a bunch of trivia, what are you the most knowledge about song, band, or TV show or something? What would you nail? <laughs> Lydia looks hot in that dress. <laughs> Clifton Branch, I'm a Raiders fan, big time. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. I know, let me tell you, brother. <laughs> it goes back, I'm 1900s <laughs> over here. Yes, um, I would have to say football, for real. Thank you, Keith, for you got getting it. me I, out of that. I know you, I got you. <laughs> Just remember, Lydia looks hot in that dress. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sorry Thank for you. confusing you. Uh, no, 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 it's the end of the day. Our brains have turned to you, mush. Do, I'm going to give you a hug. You better. <laughs> say the death of Lucy was uh, a, that was a big one for me because yeah. one I had I had three Lucy's die on me that day you know <laughs> she progressed three days uh, or three different ages that day and uh, so it was it was an all-day thing shooting that scene it was hard and, and long but I, I'm really happy and proud of that episode I mean the death of my dog in my arms. And, fun fact, um, the oldest Lucy that's dying in my arms when she actually does die is my acting teacher from way back in the day. And so that was really cool to wow. have someone that I know and love play this really emotional and tender scene with me. And this, you know, and to, to sort of bring that back full circle to someone who taught me how to act, who I'm now getting the chance to have this really powerful moment with. So that was cool. Yeah, you guys did great. Oh, thank you. Uh, for me, it was the, um, the episode when I thought we lost 10K on the Mississippi River, and I wanted to wait. Everybody needed to go keep pressing on with the mission, but I wanted to stay behind, try to find them, and then they convinced me to just leave, and that was pretty emotional. Not the time you tipped over the canoe? Yes, Khalid! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's 
tipped over the canoe. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't make the gag reel though, so that was worth it. <laughs> Actually, we have time for one more quick question, but unfortunately. Thank you. You're Thanks welcome. So Thanks. How you doing? Big fan of your show. Oh, thanks. Uh, thank you. Just one question that I think uh, is okay. uh, This is for Doc Russell. Um, where can I get some seaweed around? <laughs> Due to an inconsistent sourcing of zombies. Are you going to give him a hug instead as a consolation? <laughs> and first of all, you do need you need a Z Wacker T-shirt, man. Seriously? <laughs> I know. Uh, walking Dead was my original, but Z Nation is right yeah. there. You bet. Unless I can get a hat like his, then <laughs> that'd be nice. Look at that, David Lab. You gave me the hat. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> You know, David was talking earlier today about trying to get uh, uh, the z uh, Z-weed at your local dispensary, maybe getting an actual strain. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, great time. maybe Granddaddy Burger oh, meets Jack Herbert. That, that would be a great strain, maybe that is the Z-weed. Let me tell you, at every convention we go to, so many people come up and give this guy weed. I leave with <laughs> 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 or I got these edibles my wife made for you. You're gonna love them. <laughs> like when you're like when you're in places that weed isn't legal. No, weed is legal in Washington State. No, no, I'm saying when. No, even yeah. We're not trying to get in trouble. We're not in Alabama. I don't even like, care. I just put it in my pocket. He, and if they bust me, takes it on the plane. Russell, don't get busted at the airport. Oh, no, 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 I want to make sure that you get. Uh, yeah, I do. Okay, Carl, you have one special announcement for everybody, right? Oh, yes. Uh, it's a two uh, mic announcement. <laughs> right. We have a new president. What is it? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're here to announce. There's going to be a spin-off of Z Nation on Netflix called Black Summer. Yeah. Woo! A prequel to Z Nation that goes back to, I mean, some of you know about Black Summer and the mythology of the story. It's about four months into the apocalypse, back after day one. Uh, the low point of the apocalypse is the summer when 95% of the population dies over the course of the summer. Um, it's going to be dark, crazy, edgy. Um, it's directed by John Hyams, uh, starring Jamie King as a mother who's driven to save her daughter in the apocalypse. Um, and it's going to be super scary and intense. Um, Do any of the characters cross over? We're too old to play ourselves now. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's back in time. We're too old. The CGI to get well, it's a look at like five years ago. You're crazy. You know, we've always been sort of the the, the stepchild of The Walking Dead, kind of like the funny <laughs> version of The Walking Dead. And uh, but we have a lot of great filmmakers and and people involved in the show, and we wanted to do something where we set out to go. Do you want a real scary, old school, back to the basics, run your ass off zombie show? That's what we're gonna do. Um, and it's going to be very different. It's not going to be episodic like you would normally see. It's going to be like an eight-hour chunk you can fight your way through um, on Netflix with all kinds of short chapters that are different lengths and times. So you never know who's going to get killed, who's going to live. You can't tell anything by where you are in the episode about what's going to happen. Um, and I think it's going to be really exciting and uh, crazy. And, no, uh, no cheese wheels or zombies? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it'll have a bit, like its own dark sense of humor, but I think it's early in the apocalypse. We're going back to, you know, kind of the, the roots of uh, zombies um, in Night of the Living Dead. Um, and it's, uh, it's very uh, much about 
an American refugee story, seeing Americans run for their lives and lose their children and, and fight to save each other um, at their worst and their best. And it's a part of the apocalypse. The Sea Nation is sort of like the apocalypse as it evolved, got weirder and weirder and weirder as it went. And this is before it got that weird, when it was just scary. Um, and as realistic as possible. And I think that's the direction we're going for Black Summer. So keep an eye on out for it on uh, Netflix coming soon. Awesome. So Sharknado is August 19th. August 19th. And Z Nation is back in October. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for your cast and crew.